Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining our program today. Uh, my name is Oksana Chvekina. Uh, me and Helena Nikanole are the curators of Uncanny Dream exhibition, our Electronica Garden Moscow. Uh, our garden is taking place in hybrid format, uh, and the purpose of today's session is to discuss uh, particular qualities of such exhibitions. Um, organizing this panel, curating hybrid events as electronic uh, experience. Me and Helena wanted to gather curators of our electronic uh, gardens of this year and previous year from Russia uh, to present our projects, discuss them and share our curatorial perspectives. So our speakers today are Olga Vat. Uh, Olga is a curator, co-founder of Nado Curatorial Agency and the curator of Ars Electronica Garden Hydra in St. Petersburg. Hello, Olga. Hello. Um, our second speaker is Natalia Fedorova. Uh, Natalia is an artist, curator, and researcher working in the field of science art and new media. Currently, Natalia is teaching science art at Itmo University. And Natalia was a curator of Pan Gardenia Garden of 2020 in St. Petersburg. Hello, Natalia. Uh, um, and also, <laughs> and also, our third speaker today is Olga Zubova. Uh, Olga is a sound and visual artist, performer, art historian, and a curator. Uh, Olga is curating High School of Economics Garden Pavilion, which is titled Sonic Portals. Um, I think in the, in the beginning, uh, we can say uh, and, or make a short introduction about the Uncanny Dream project created by Helena and me this year. Uh, Helena, can you show us some pictures from the opening, please? Uh, the Uncanny Dream exhibition is taking place in hybrid format. Uh, the physical exhibition uh, is located in Electron Museum in Moscow. Uh, it is a, a sorry. It is a, it is a gallery focused on media art. Uh, we had the opening on Friday, and here are some photos from the curatorial tour and the opening, and also some photos of uh, of, of exposition. our artists. Um, and Can you Dream project uh, also has a website. We will show it a bit later. Uh, then Can you Dream event is focused on, uh, uh, on the media art in the age of pandemics. Uh, we have focused on three mediums. Uh, it is artificial intelligence, or neural networks, video games, and AR. Uh, and we have gathered 15 artists and art collectives uh, from Russia, digital natives, uh, working in this field of, uh, of media art. So actually the idea was to, uh, to choose some projects which could be exhibited uh, both online and offline in a good way so that's why we decided to choose many video games and um and as you as you may notice that we decided to appropriate this um color neon uh and we asked our artists also to to wear some neon outfits uh to connect somehow our digital uh, part of the project with our like physical part. And um, so, yeah, we, uh, we exhibited this uh, young artist. Um, most of them are um, Z and Y generation. And uh, so they work with digital mediums like video games, AI, AR, uh, VR. Yes, and uh, actually the, the show is dedicated to, uh, to our feelings and anxieties uh, in times of pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, 
but yeah, the uh, the point was to to show projects which kind of are reflecting this uh, feeling of anxiety and this uncanny feeling that we are still trying to live our lives to do our projects, but at the same moment people are dying and like many terrible things are happening. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Um, I think we can show a couple of projects which are um, the most relevant to understanding the um, the show. Um, uh, maybe some of video games first. Yeah, thing. some of video games like um, Abuhovska or Galicia. Yeah, Abuhovska, yes. Kenya Bohovska, uh, Eternum Illut. Uh, so we actually uh, we actually asked our artists to somehow include video games uh, which are made in Unity um, engine to 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 do some kind of um, presentation which could be exhibited online directly on our website. And yeah, so uh, this is a project by Xenia Bohovska, which, which is exploring the different ideas about biopolitics and um, trying to... So yeah, actually, um, actually, the uh, the game presents the city in some emergency state, and you can navigate through the city and uh, looking for some items which are um, which are explaining this emergency state. I recommend you to play this game. <laughs> Uh, another another project which is um, also super relevant uh, for understanding the point is uh, Yuka's Nightmares by Yuli Um She's an independent game video games developer, and uh, this game I, actually we forgot to say uh, to tell you that um, all of all of these projects are from 2020 or 2021. So uh, this project is made in 2021, and then um, and the project is uh, dedicated to the, um, to the feeling of isolation uh, during the first wave of, of the pandemic. And um, so basically, uh, you you find yourself in this room, like uh, um, like uh, isolated in the room, and you you should uh, navigate through the city. Also, like you're uh, kind of trying to escape this place. We can watch um, short video documentation. residents and guests of St. Petersburg. This is an apocalypse public service announcement. Please do not panic. Follow simple instructions. Take only essential items and carefully listen to the public address system. If you are inside a building, please leave it as soon as possible. The Apocalypse Prevention Service 
recommends you to keep the following items in your emergency kit. Cutter, scissors, flashlight, mobile, pills, water bottle, marker, salicylic acid, bank cards, hard disk, bracelet, show another project uh, the defining by puddles of the Europe. this is uh, also a video game and uh, the exhibition is presented as a VR installation um, but actually when I downloaded the game I realized that I uh, I like the this experience on my laptop much more than an exhibition space because it's like a more intimate experience it's also like a uh, interesting that video games is such a media which is more natural to uh, to show to present online, and this installation presents this um, kind of forest magic forest, uh, which is at the same moment as metaphoric uh, presentation of our fears and our uh, uncanny feelings. So you can navigate through the uh, forest, also uh, finding yourself in some different places. Like, uh, um, for instance, you can find this um, coronavirus. And um, but yes, I recommend you to download the video game and to play. It's also, um, I think it's also, super private project which becomes more like um uh which becomes uh, when, when you experience it uh, on your laptop it's more private experience like you can understand uh is better than when you're exploring it in vr set uh okay so what else maybe asana wants to add something Yes, I wanted to add that actually video games are super organic for online format. And maybe it is one of, um, of not many such formats uh, that are suitable for online, for, for website. Uh, in 2020, we had to deal with, with numerous online events like viewing rooms and viewing rooms from galleries and uh, and art markets, and usually we have we, we had seen I I would say all the challenges of, of this format, um, and maybe it is one uh, of the theme we would discuss today, or maybe rise today during the panel, and the second one I would say is uh, an interface challenge for the for, for the curator, because. Um, we still don't have an answer which architecture or environment is more suitable for for for, for this digital format uh, for the web format um, yeah <laughs> maybe this is what else i would like to talk about today if there will be uh, some some suitable time for it um, maybe we should now um, switch to our speakers and presentations. Uh, I would like to firstly give the word to Olga Vad. Hello again. Uh, Hello. Thank you so much uh, for Oksana and Elena for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, my project. And thank you so much uh, for those who joined our uh, talk today. Uh, so this year, uh, in the frame of Ars Electronica, uh, we are organizing actually like a very physical event. Uh, so it's a it is a huge exhibition. Uh, 
which I'm creating uh, together with my co-curator Lydia Guminiuk, and uh, the title of, uh, its, uh, of the exhibition is uh, Hydra, uh, New Media Art in, uh, in the Context of Eco-Anxiety. So um, we are organizing it as an independent curators, but well, in uh, actually uh, we have our own uh, curatorial agency, which we established uh, in, in the end of uh, 2019. So just before the uh, the pandemic, uh, and so it's I, I would say that its influence was very crucial on our um, curatorial and artistic and business strategies for the next couple of years. Uh, and so it was uh, so much, uh, I would say, a relief and uh, an excitement uh, when we got the opportunity finally uh, to organize uh, an exhibition in a physical space. Uh, because of course we all know like we are all um, overwhelmed with the uh, digital communication and digital tools and it's uh, uh, during the pandemic, it became so much clear that uh, the um, experience of a physical space uh, is uh, um, and uh, um, the powerful uh, nature of uh, the uh, interactive uh, communication of immersive uh, um, uh, spaces is uh, is something that uh, cannot be uh, replaced. And uh, so we, we are really, uh, uh, during this um, pandemics, we understood that probably the main focus, uh, the main topic uh, and the main uh, sphere in which we want to work is uh, multi-sensory, multi-sensorial uh, spaces and creating them. So uh, this exhibition that I'm talking about, uh, so it's it just happening in uh, and and a garden and that is electronic garden. So it is happening in uh, a port. Uh, it's a very young but vibrant um, cultural center uh, on the banks of the Neva River uh, near the Gulf of Finland, and uh, right on the with the beautiful view on the yeah, on the water the and uh, as i mentioned before so uh, the title of yeah. our exhibition yeah. it's um hydra hydra uh, so the main uh, topic uh, is uh, so is ecology with the focus on water related uh, questions agendas so uh, and we are very lucky to you know to, to speak about uh, that uh, just on the banks of the uh, wonderful uh, water reservoir. So like conceptually, it's, uh, I think it's very beautiful. So I, I would like to start sh to sharing my screen to um, show a few um, works that are included in, in the exhibition and to talk more about the main concept of it. Uh, so actually the opening is uh, right tomorrow. Uh, so we're in the middle of, uh, uh, of the setup. Uh, so I will just show you uh, the site of the exhibition and uh, yeah so it's like digital presence so it's actually also very always uh, very um, how to say interesting uh, dynamics uh, how which uh, of course i know like m m many creators uh, and uh, organizers event organizers would uh, understand uh, and agree that there is al also always like very uh, interesting dynamics between uh, the concept of the exhibition and how you imagine it to be realized and uh, uh, the actual realization. So for now, uh, it's more, it's mostly uh, like, a, uh, I would say like a digital uh, or conceptual phase and tomorrow we will see how it all uh, came uh, into, into act, how it all comes into action. Um, so uh, it is a really large scale exhibition. So it takes uh, about uh, uh, 3,000 3, square meters and uh, it represents uh, large scale uh, installations by um, both uh, 
local and uh, international artists who mostly work in the uh, sphere of art and science and new media art. And uh, we, we uh, managed to uh, commission a few new, new works, uh, especially for, for the exhibition. Uh, and I will talk later about that. So um, about the concept. So the main uh, metaphor of the exhibition, it is reflected in the name of the project. So it's Hydra. And Hydra, uh, the word itself, uh, stands for both. It's uh, on one hand is water, the, uh, the element closest to St. Petersburg, which stands uh, on the water and was established uh, on the swamps and like water and uh, floods, for example, is like a very um, huge brand. And, uh, and also like the water is, uh, the substance where all the living forms, uh, all the living, all the living forms uh, appeared, were born, and the Hydra also is a mythical. Uh, on the other hand, is a mythical creature uh, that grows new heads in, in place of felt ones. So um, we we look at env environmental issues um, related to water in the context of artistic statements and uh, are researching how uh, the humanity influences those changes. So um, when we were developing the concept, we really uh, wanted to uh, speak about ecology without uh, you know, the narrative of the guilt and, uh, and shame. And in that, in that uh, sense, we're very uh, close to the concept of British philosopher Timothy Morton, who speaks about uh, uh, that itself, uh, the concept of nature is perhaps the most dangerous idea created by humanity, because it separates us from uh, all other phenomena on the planet, uh, like an inter insulated uh, closed category. And uh, that uh, ecology, slog ecology slogans uh, shouldn't be shameful uh, uh, and shouldn't call to save the planet or nature because of, like many living organisms existed before humanity and uh, will probably be able to survive uh, after, uh, after that, but it's more a call to preserve uh, the ecosystem in which uh, he, uh, humanity is integrated. Um, so I would like to switch on our teasers so you, you would have an uh, image of uh, how, what, what, of what uh, projects are uh, involved, uh, included in the exhibition. So this is it. Uh, it could give uh, some uh, glimpse of uh, what uh, we are opening tomorrow. So and regarding the list of artists that are presented, uh, so you can see like on my screen that it's a uh, uh, selection of uh, well-known uh, and uh, our, our international artists and both um, Russian artists who already um, presented um, were presented in the international context. For example, uh, one of the artists who are making a new work for us, commissioning the work, it's uh, uh, artists, uh, usually artists from uh, Yekaterinburg, but now they uh, reside in St. Petersburg. And so their project that they are developing for us, it's called the Kerosene Chronicles, the Fungi. So uh, it is a robotic installation, uh, which is uh, uh, based on the research about uh, fungi, for candida, uh, it's about the fungi that lives 
uh, in the aviation kerosene and uh, actually might uh, lead to a plane crash. And uh, so the, and the evolution strategy uh, of those organisms is very uh, uh, much connected with the Anthropocene um, epoch on the um, hu human activity uh, during the last uh, 100 uh, years. So uh, during this, in this uh, um, project, uh, they are also uh, uh, researching um, the, the future of uh, the human machine communication and they uh, are thinking and uh, making a, a statement that uh, olfactory communication is actually one of the evolution strategy for the coexistence, coexistence of human and machines. So then this is a, um, actually doesn't, like the <laughs> images here doesn't fully reflect uh, the um, shape of, of the robotic installations that are going to happen tomorrow, but it gives also a glimpse. Um, another project um, that is uh, included in the exhibition is a very new installation by a Norwegian uh, sound artist, Jana Vinderen. Uh, it's a work called Listening for the Dead Stones. So Jana Vinderen, uh, it's a very very uh, well-known uh, sound artist. Uh, in uh, 2011, she won Golden Nika at Ars Electronica for digital music and sound art. And the work that we have presented was just uh, uh, presented in August for, for the first time in Helsinki. It was commissioned and produced by organization Ichme Helsinki. And so this uh, sound installation is uh, uh, based on the research of the Baltic Sea. It's one of the most uh, uh, polluted uh, water reservoirs in, uh, in the world, and uh, she uh, she uh, is researching how human activity uh, is influence, influencing the dead zones in the Baltic Sea. Um, another uh, work that uh, is uh, included in the in the uh, exhibition is an installation clamps by Marco Barozzi. So uh, in nature, clamps are usually detectors of pollutants. And um, in this uh, sound installations, uh, he, um, so the installation itself is a collection of kinetic sculptures, uh, which can convert data from water quality sensors into sounds and movements. And so uh, the uh, movement and the sound of this installation at Hydro Exhibition is actually based on the data from uh, Niva River near Sepkabelfort. We actually cannot, cannot hear the sound. You cannot hear the, the sound, okay. Um, okay, I don't know how to switch, uh, how, to, how to fix it. <laughs> if you could uh, help me with that, I will try to switch it on. Uh, if not, uh, then I will just show the, the visuals. Uh, when you are starting to sh like, uh, you, you should indicate when you're sharing the screen, you should mm -hmm. indicate to share the sound. I think mm -hmm. now you can do it like a stopping sharing the screen and do it again. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like that. okay, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, sorry. Thank you. 
So uh, the exhibition itself, uh, it consists of uh, three main sections. Uh, one is called Destruction. Uh, so it's uh, dedicated to the image of a humanity that uh, came uh, as a new uh, um, as a new power that could uh, change the landscapes and the uh, chemical uh, uh, and the chemicals in the water and the temperature of, of the world ocean. And uh, so the, 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 the second uh, section is called attention. So it's uh, more about like a critical approach uh, to the uh, lo uh, local, um, local and global uh, ecological situations and uh, um, searching for an opportunity how we can fix uh, this damage and uh, the third uh, section is uh, more about um, um, for thinking uh, about the technology as a new nature and uh, the future in which uh, due to the uh, human activity uh, some natural phenomena are, are, are starting to uh, to disappear and if and what humanity will uh, do instead of those, uh, you know, like fallen heads, if we go back to the metaphor of Hydra. And for example, in this, um, in this uh, sim simulation section, uh, one of the uh, huge uh, spatial installation that is that we present is uh, is this installation by local St. Petersburg artists named Tundra. Uh, so the installation is the day uh, left field. see the installation is a, a meadow that is floating in the air and the system of uh, uh, lasers and uh, sound and other light effects uh, that, that make this uh, vision of a dream of a digital uh, nature. So uh, I can of course go on and on about the uh, projects that are involved in the in Hydra exhibition but uh, I think I have a limitation uh, in, in time. Uh, what I just wanted to add that uh, so the exhibition takes uh, place for the next five months, and we we are having a huge uh, public program, and uh, that will go on all through all these five months. And one of the main uh, initiatives that we are organizing during this Hydra is a Hydra Lab for young artists and uh, scientists and ecologists uh, that, uh, we, that will work uh, during one month in November uh, and we'll have a series of workshops and mentoring se sessions and lectures and so on and so on, uh, aimed at uh, group work. So uh, the event of this uh, 
lab. Uh, we're expecting uh, small groups of small transdisciplinary groups of participants uh, to develop uh, new projects on the topic of ecology. Not exactly, so we're not uh, uh, aiming at uh, those projects to be art projects. We just want uh, to, you know, to get the people with a different expertise. Uh, and help them to develop new ideas and new concepts and so on and see what would happen. Um, yeah, I think so. yeah, sure. is, is the public program uh, offline or online? Uh, it's both. Um, so mostly because due to uh, the situations in St. Petersburg, uh, not huge event are actually possible. For, exa for example, lectures and workshops up to uh, 75 people. Uh, so it's okay. So we are you know, taking this uh, opportunity and uh, trying to make uh, as much physical events as possible, but also uh, online. Uh, we are recording everything and uh, make the translate, the webcasting of some of the events and uh, so so it's both but for this hydro lab uh, it will be a hybrid format because there will be physical uh, physical lectures i would say so some of the even international artists uh, are coming to conduct the workshops and give lectures but some of them will be conducted on the online format okay so it's not only for local artists and researchers, um, people, I don't know, from Moscow, from from all over the world can participate? No, it's actually not, not for the participants. It's mostly aimed at local, at mm -hmm. locals. But the, but the teachers and uh, lecturers and tutors, they are from uh, all over the world and some of them participating. Uh, you know, offline, some of them participate in online. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Looks super impressive. Thank you. I wish to buy tickets to St. Petersburg right now to see it. It looks super great. Super. Please come. Thank you. Please come. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Wonderful. Thank you. Very I would be much. happy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, maybe we can switch now to Natalia and your presentation about Pan Gardenia project conducted mm -hmm. uh, previous year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for having me. I, I have um, a strange sense of uh, of a possibility to be historic uh, about uh, Ars Electronica in, um, in St. Petersburg in particular and uh, Ars Electronica in Russia. And I see that uh, Helena and Olga and Oksana are laughing because I mean, who would have thought uh, three years ago that uh, we have not just one garden in Moscow and St. Petersburg, but we have two gardens in Moscow and two gardens in St. Petersburg. So, in a way, uh, not to feel bad about being historic, I'll try to uh, think of it of the garden that uh, gardens the number of gardens that we created as uh, in a generative sense. I'm not trying to say that we were the source of anything. We certainly were not, uh, but uh, you know, uh, I like to think of it uh, as the. Uh, soil that is cultivated uh, and that produces um, produces fruit. And we were actually, when I was uh, rereading our curatorial text, uh, we were thinking of, um, and that was a very, it wasn't even a post-pandemic time. Well, when we were creating the exhibition, we were thinking that it is a post-pandemic time. And then there was a next wave and the next wave. So we were not exactly in, uh, post-pandemic, but some kind of liminal pandemic situation in which um, the temporality was um, constantly reconstructed. So we were thinking of the gardens um, that can be somewhere in between data and meta and trying to think what would be those gardens between data and meta. And um, using this logic of pandemic, we actually decided not to be 
international, uh, not to be global, but to be as local as we can. So uh, we invited 50 projects that are created, that were created. Some of them were created especially for um, our gardens, but some of them existed before. Um, so these 50 projects were all produced by artists who are local to St. Petersburg. They are not necessarily um, Russians, uh, but those who uh, act uh, in St. Petersburg as a cultural scene. And uh, we managed to work with uh, 10 institutions, uh, 10 actual physical institutions. Some of them were gardens, some of them were the universities. Um, so uh, I'll name the gardens and then I'll talk about each uh, garden and show one artwork from uh, each of the gardens, maybe two, we'll see. Um, so uh, the gardens are the following. Uh, the first one was Parniki. Parniki is a Russian word uh, for the galleries, um, the glass galleries uh, in which fruits and vegetables are grown uh, in um, the winter time. And we were thinking of Parniki as an excellent metaphor for an artist at the pandemic time, uh, being an, um, some kind of a glass showcase that is separating him or her from the screen and yet uh, covered and yet uh, and also fragile as ever. Uh, so the next garden um, that uh, we were thinking of uh, was uh, the wandering gardens. Um, so the wandering gardens um, had to do with the same concept that um, Olga was the same fact actually so the concept uh, that Olga was pointing at. Uh, she said that St. Petersburg is built on water, that, uh, that it was built on swamp and that it's constantly under the threat of flood uh, and this threat has only been fixed um, in 2011 when the uh, flood prevention facility complex was built. Uh, but still the architecture of the city, the Abvodny Canal, Gribayedva Canal, these were all canals uh, that were supposed to take the water away from uh, the Niva River to protect the city. So the Wandering Garden was a um, boat trip uh, in which um, artists and scientists uh, were traveling to collect data and uh, create an artwork based on the data that we collected on the uh, Krukov Canal, uh, on, based on the microbiome of Niva, Fantanka, and Krukov Canal. Uh, and uh, abandoned gardens uh, was, uh, were the gardens that were based on the cultural institutions that were empty during the pandemic time, which, were, which we experienced when we were in the project and then they were open again um, in the summer when we were preparing the project and they closed again in, uh, in autumn. So there was a lot of um, growth and development uh, around the abandoned gardens. And uh, the last one was a fruit of our imagination, post non-human gardens. We were trying to think what what uh, can be, what will be, what, what directions can uh, the garden uh, take uh, in this state, uh, in this condition between, uh, between matter and data. And uh, in this um, condition of um, pangardenia that we formulated uh, being uh, global, but also being guarded, um, guarded uh, here I mean the etymology of the garden which means uh, protected uh, guarded and also uh, the um, Slavic word gradina means the city so garden is a city uh, garden is a place which is protected and um, pun uh, as panic um, and pun as global so uh, I'll start sharing my screen and hopefully I'm going to be successful Yep, um, so here are the four gardens that I was talking about and I'm just going to show one project from each garden. So I'll probably uh, show uh, this project 
Silk Dawn from Parniki, created by Sever 7, uh, Sever uh, North 7, if you wish. Um, this is called uh, Parnik Matyushina, and uh, if anyone knows Sever 7, these, they usually work uh, in the medium of performance, and they're as non-digital as you can get. Uh, but um, for, uh, for our gardens, they created something in Unity, which uh, is... Yeah! I'll just show. First. I'm sorry, you stopped sharing your screen. Mm -hmm. You cannot see it now. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Am I sharing the sound? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me recollect where I was and share the screen again. Okay. First. You can also navigate uh, in this video as in the space. I think uh, this work can also be in Uncanny Dreams uh, as well. I think that can be a precursor of the uh, Uncanny Dream um, collection of works. Okay, so um, that was uh, the gardens um, that we were thinking of um, as uh, the artwork that um, the artists were creating when they're closed uh, in their spaces, in their rooms, in their flats. So as I said, Wandering Gardens was a boat trip and I'll just show a little bit of the documentation of this boat trip. Water shapes and constructs this city. Rivers and channels and affect um, this climate, colors. Um, so we, we had a very unusual um, passenger on our board, which were petunia plants. Uh, they seem to be the stars of uh, of this uh, boat trip, and everybody was taking photos of us because they thought that we are a wedding. <laughs> So in the nose was Boris Shoshenkov, who was sonifying the data. And this is the drone that was created at uh, MIT Robotics Lab uh, that was collecting the data from the water. And um, I'll show the abandoned gardens. So the abandoned gardens uh, would be the reflections on these institutions that are semi-closed and what is happening in them as they are closed for the humans. And maybe there is some kind of a non-human life that is happening there. So I'll show the project uh, by Andrei Nosov and Anna Polkacheva, which is called Plantlets. And it contemplates on these uh, apps that are collecting and that are helping one to focus. And what this project is, uh, it is an supposedly eternal garden that you launch and it continues growing whether you look at it or you don't look at it. And so you can, once you've started growing your garden, uh, you can come back and see how it has evolved. And um, 
on one hand, uh, it speculates on the uh, on this uh, attention that we are losing in the network. On the other hand, it is um, another take on thinking about the trace that we live uh, in the digital world and how it affects uh, the natural world. And this little bits that the plantlets are made of uh, were scanned at uh, the Botanic Museum of St. Petersburg University. And it is also some kind of uh, breathing in the second life into their collection, into their quite dusty but incredibly beautiful herbarium. So that is that. And I'm approaching my last garden, which is post non human garden. And I'll probably show the project uh, by Andrei Rolov and Nastya Yitzhye, uh, which is called the uh, Random Access Memory. So this project uh, is based on the differently trained uh, style gun networks that are trying to replicate uh, trying to reflect on the dance performance that is happening on the garden but unlike the human viewer who would certainly if they were to document this dance performance uh, would focus on the people uh, the um, as you can see in the documentation uh, the neural network is actually focused on the trees and is not uh, reproducing the dancers faithfully. Or uh, this is uh, a different kind of dance, sort of a dance of memories or dance of glimpses of light. So seems that the trees are doing the dance performance here rather than rather than humans. Okay, there are very many projects that I uh, didn't talk about. I didn't talk about uh, IBM project and their uh, fatigue cave. I didn't talk about the uh, garden that we did in Mozilla Hubs, but it's all there on the website and uh, you're welcome to look at it and explore it uh, with historical, futurist, or generative view. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a question? Really like what, More than was, welcome. what was the most <laughs> challenging uh, during the work? Uh, on your garden? Oh, well, uh, that was pretty crazy with a team of four people who I didn't name, which is a uh, shame on me. So uh, the team, um, it, it was four gardens that were curated by four people, uh, Artur Konstantinov, Laura Rodriguez, and Anna Kozlova. And still with this team, it was pretty much impossible to manage 50 projects. Something was happening all the time. And um, and that was uh, quite hard to grasp it in the same moment. The uh, second problem was with the institutions that were half closed and half open. And that was another, um, another issue with that. And uh, I think we also had a problem with visibility that uh, doesn't seem to be the case, for example, for our amazing Hydra project that I'm looking forward to be witnessing tomorrow. Uh, the physical space of the garden was just uh, in air gallery and uh, in um, and the new stage. And at the new stage, we couldn't um, have any audience, though it was a beautifully rehearsed uh, swarm, um, swarm orchestra, but we couldn't have uh, spectators. The number of spectators was limited. So uh, I would say that... Um, one of the difficult um, one of the difficulties was uh, trying and finding this balance between the online and offline presence and coordinating the online and offline events. I see. Yeah. I would say that I, I super liked the link between virtual and physical in this project like how it accumulates uh, all the events in the city and the city and the, and the digital uh, prolonging of these uh, actions and projects um, on the physical space. It looks mm -hmm. super, super cool. 
um, I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to ask if the website um, helped with the promotion of the of the whole project, like um, like a promo tool. Was it uh, helping? Or, Say it again. What, what um, I wanted to ask if the website helped with the promotion of the project. Was it a suitable tool for promoting the, the event? Mm, I have a feeling that we had more views from uh, Ars Electronica than uh, from mm. the local community. But mm. I also have a feeling that, um, you know, it, it, grown, it has grown in the different ways. And uh, that also gave a lot of, uh, I remember talking about to all of those artists, uh, many of them uh, at some period were my students and I was telling to them about Ars Electronica as uh, about, you know, as about Parnas or as about mm -hmm. heaven, uh, as about something that, I mean, you can probably touch uh, to, but I don't know, maybe when you are dead. Um, but uh, at this point, all this uh, young and not necessarily so young artists were included in uh, something that we all understood as, um, as an important achievement. So I guess for them, it gave a lot of, um, a, a lot of rise of self-esteem, a lot of you know, courage to continue working. <laughs> which was, uh, you know, all our blood and sweat uh, and their blood and sweat. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess uh, the beautiful fruits grow from something like this. <laughs> yeah, and it was, as, as you said, a super important to uh, create. Uh, we, we were very maximalist about including everybody who was ready to mm -hmm. do something. Mm -hmm. um, and as a... Uh, oldest curator in this team I was slightly skeptical about this but the youngest part of the team they were very energetic they were uh, hoping and helping and uh, not sleeping to make this all happen and well um, I see that there are now four gardens and we are not even doing anything <laughs> Yes. Cool, cool, cool. I had this year. I had the same feeling because uh, uh, we have many of my students participating uh, the exhibition, and yeah, for them it was like wow, Ars Electronica. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Ars Electronica you told us about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't know, I can feel slightly uncomfortable saying my students because they, these are now accomplished artists, uh, but I don't know what's the polite way of designate this kind of relationship that I talked to them before about this. I don't know, I probably should think of politically correct way of saying my students. Uh, <laughs> but you, if they are our students, how could I say them? Students of my heavens. Okay. <laughs> heaven seems to be closer than than we think. Yeah, and heaven is also a garden, right? Yeah. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we have a question, please, from Nadia Krastiva. A question, please, perhaps to all panelists. Uh, do you believe that the hybrid festival performance will remain after the pandemic? If yes, what challenges creators and digital creators may face considering artistic festivals of any art form, cinema, music, theater, visual arts, etc. cetera? Uh, as for me, I believe that definitely the hybrid uh, format is our future uh, because it is um, multi, multi, um, it has, mo mo uh, how, how I would say it, it has multiple uh, ways to use it. Uh, as we see, uh, the online format could, could be presented through the educational program or, th or through the public program, for example. And as for me, everything depends on the artworks because not everything could be um, transferred to the online part. It could be only documentation, for example, or, or it could be the artwork itself. So yes, that's what I would say. I think I want to add that it's it's really great for for the artists uh, to be presented in hybrid format because it's they're uh, more visible for the international audience. True. Yeah, so for some digital artists, this is really great. 
way to present their work for promotion. Yeah. So I think, um, well, I think uh, for my future exhibitions, I would uh, consider this hybrid format, uh, even at the point of calculating the budget. <laughs> <laughs> but then oh, the question I, is whether it's still the same exhibition or it's something else. I guess it's just something else. Something else, like, like but I, I think it's interesting like, to include this hybrid format to all of my projects. I would I'm say really interested. Which... Sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, you started. Okay. I'm really interested in formats of online residences now, how it will work like. Uh, and I think we, we will uh, find different fruitful ways how to work with these digital formats in different ways. So let's see it. Well, I'm not sure actually about um, online residences. I think online residences are more mostly for to, to support artists, like uh, not yes yes for like some networking, of more like for supporting artists. Mm -hmm. I think that um, the uh, hybrid format is a kind of a curse that we are now going to have that everybody, whatever you do, everybody asks, uh, is there, um, will you uh, stream it online? And uh, even when you didn't plan to stream something online, now you have to stream something online, that's now a moral obligation. And um, I have mixed feelings, hybrid feelings about hybrid format. So on one hand, one of the most inspirational events that uh, I attended uh, last year were hybrid events. And I don't remember being as irritated and tired ever as when attending these events. Inspira inspired, but also irritated and tired. And uh, I doubt, uh, I, I think we still need to formulate what uh, what is it when it's happening online so it's not uh engaging with the community in the same way as we are engaging when we are physically present it's different emotionally it's different you know sensually it's different uh, i agree that uh, in terms of promotion um this and in terms of budget uh, it, it is so much better uh, but um I, I think it has a kind of a questionable relationship with the presence. So it happened, but it also didn't. And uh, I'm not sure what, um, how, to, how to deal with this. So I think it's mostly happening either for the specialists or for the students, and it's not happening for the general audience in this case, in the same way as it used to happen, um, as it happens when it happens. But I think that uh, it's mostly because that uh, we're still for searching for hybrid formats that actually for, could work in both ways, because we're like we're on the very first uh, stages of experimenting, and uh, that's why it's mostly aimed not at the uh, common audience, but mostly for the professional, for, for the community itself, as it, as it usually happens in everything new. So it's first the communities that is, uh, that uh, is involved and uh, that is also the pro producer and the viewer or the participants. And after that, it's uh, it's get more broadened. But for example, I think uh, for example in Russia, uh, the festival Future Cities that happened in a few uh, yeah. cities like mm -hmm. Moscow, Saint Petersburg, and so on, Petersburg, uh, with the AR festival with AR public art and a series of different uh, talks so with a very nice, like an elegant and simple uh, format uh, of such uh, uh, hybrid uh, format festival, uh, which was also aimed at like, not, of course it wasn't like at the very common audience, but it's quite broad, broader audience. Uh, and uh, yeah, 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 and it's, I, I really enjoyed it. And also I think that like, I don't know, it, I think it's not, uh, probably very modest to speak about uh, our own projects. But uh, last year, together with uh, Yelena, we, we also uh, made a garden uh, in a hybrid format. And uh, one of the hybrid tools that uh, was used, uh, that, that we used, 
was um, used for the website of the of our exhibition and of our garden when uh, we used um, machine vision technology in face of facial recognition uh, as an interface to interact with the content and uh, this is a mixture of um, i would say the physical and digital i think is actually very interesting and uh, should be discovered <laughs> more i think um, I mean, it's still very interesting for me. Yeah, so yeah. maybe there is some kind of um, way of translating that uh, into an uh, interface, and I'm uh, thinking of. Um, yeah, I was actually thinking of your project as an excellent example of uh, engaging the viewer uh, on in some kind of physical level um, in the project. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, in case of questions, please use chat. Um, okay, Laura, we got a question about the Uncanny Dream uh, exhibition. Why did you decide to build a 2D website to access the different works, especially when many are 3D spaces? Uh, I wouldn't say that many are 3D spaces. I would say it's only 30% uh, of, um, of the whole exhibition. Um, and as for me, I definitely prefer flat interfaces, <laughs> speaking about that. I'm definitely not, an, uh, not a fan of digital museums or Mozilla Hub uh, tools, for example. Uh, I think physical museums should stay physical <laughs> and digital world should look like flat, I would say, like that. Yeah, exactly. Elena. Yeah, exactly. I actually, pers personally, I hate Mozilla Hubs <laughs> uh, because it doesn't give you the same experience and it's like trying yeah. to imitate this 3D experience. And I think that's why also uh, a year ago with Olga, we used this interactive interface because we wanted to engage our audience in some way which could only exist online, uh, but not like copying a real world in 3D. It doesn't work like that. And it's, uh, it's not interesting to me. So we wanted to find some way uh to to create this uh really personal experience online which which could happen only online and uh for for this year for uncanny dream exhibition we decided not to use this kind of 3d environment also because many of our games you cannot uh play them like on the website you have to download the game and install it to your computer and then you can play the game so it was pretty easy. Why did we choose this like a uh, simple website to also to like focused on uh, each of the work, but not to be focused on the on creating this 3D environment for them. Like the uh, the works are the most important part. So you can download the game, you can play. And you can, uh, but some uh, some projects are also interactive. Like uh, for instance, um, Manifest in Latin Space by Roman Salatkov, and also project Dream of the Machine by um, Great Cake Art Group. So you can uh, you can interact uh, with the work on the website also. So I think I think that's it. Yes, uh, I agree. Yeah, I, I think I think we also have a presentation uh, by Olga Zubova, and yes. maybe we can we can <laughs> go on to the presentations, and then we can answer your questions. Yeah, for sure. I just wanted to add to you uh, to the last question. I know I'm not a part of your exhibition, but I think like making a 2D website is utopically is more. It's like about equality. So not so much people have the super game computers uh, and gamer, yeah. And it's just easier to access a 2D website than a 3D space. But seeing that, I would talk about 3D space that we created. <laughs> so yeah, I would 
say that like I am kind of one of the fruits that grows from the Pangardian, the last year, Ars Electronica. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> no, it just like goes that uh, last year I was living in St. Petersburg, so I was part of that garden. But this year I'm part of HSE, High School of Economic Garden. And yeah, I would start sharing my screen to explain more about that. Uh, well, it's important to notice that I'm like our project Sonic Portals is just one part of the huge Hesse Garden Pavilion. So at first I would show a um, really small trailer about the whole pavilion. So it actually includes like different computer games and real exhibitions that also moves to a 3D place. Um, yeah, and like lots of departments of our art school um, created some specific uh, or commissioned project for that, and some of them were created before, as far as I know. Um, yeah. So I think, uh, oops, stop. It's not what I wanted to share. Okay. Um, yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, on Saturday, it's going to be like a guided tour of HSE Pavilion, and they're going to talk more about different gardens in it and different parts and different projects. But today I would focus more on our project Sonic Portals, which was actually co-curated by many other participants, many other artists, sound artists, um, or multidisciplinary artists. Um, and some of them, I hope you can see stated and read it on the main website of Ars Electronica. And what was really important for us, it's uh, some of them are MA students, some of them are bachelor students, and some of them are professors. So it's more of a horizontal project that includes everyone, I would say. Well, not everyone, but as much and many people as we could include to create this space and to make it happen. And the original idea was to create an actual hybrid space that would include a um, computer game or a virtual space and an actual event, like translating this idea of portals, uh, both in a physical and a virtual spaces. But unfortunately, we couldn't make it because of some different reasons. Uh, so we stuck with the idea of creating a virtual space and this idea about the portals, like. We were trying to play with the meanings of this world, which at once um, an actual architectural part, uh, architectural entrance, and at the same time, it's a passage that helps you to travel, to move through different worlds. And also it's a web-based platform that connects different resources. So we were thinking about like actual, distances or actual space of a virtuality of a networks and how can we rethink it how can we think about it not as a hierarchical not as a space with different stoppages dark spots closures but more of a fluid space i would say um yeah and um so we were trying also to rethink this idea that all the video games more about interactivity in a sense of visuality. So I don't know, as far as we've seen lots of video games uh, today from different pavilions, from different gardens, they were not all of them, but most of them were about how we perceive it visually. visually. Well, multi-sensory, but visual part is was more important in a sense. And in our virtual space, we were trying to avoid um, what we can see as much as it was possible. But at that time, we were also thinking about the player experience. And if you just create a dark space with sounds, player would have no idea how to 
moving it how can they navigate it so we were also like thinking how can we use the minimalistic types of visuals to create a space was which was more about sonic which was more about aerial experience so it's a different um works from different artists as i said previously some of them uh, students uh, of bachelor degree, some of them students of uh, uh, master's degree, some of them professors. And what's more important, some of the works were created um, originally for physical space and they were shown in a physical space. So they were multi-channel performances or multi-channel installations and it was really interesting for us as a curators and both as artists to think how can we recreate how can we rethink an actual multi-channel physical installation into digital space and in this part i would say that unity and its webgl um, configuration really helped so each player could actually navigate through the space and create their own experience, own sonic experience. Um, so the space that we cre created is actually a performative space in a sense that every viewer, every listener gets their really unique experience uh, depending on their, I don't know, like a player experience before or like player background or depending their possibility to navigate through space. Like for example, I've tested these games with my nephews who are like four or five years old. And they were like, oh, what have we, what like, what have, what do we have to do? And I was like, okay, you have to find portals. And for them, it was more important to find like a purpose or like a main focus of this game, not so much about to listen and just to like meditate and a flow in the space so it's really interesting how different people with different possibilities abilities with different backgrounds can be in this space and can perceive this space so yeah uh, for example this space is more like uh, i don't know like a cave but a really weird one it was created by alexander sinkoa um, and it's called Secret Transmissions. So it actually was created in a pure data um, for actual audiovisual uh, project in a physical space, but then he resyncs it for the virtual space and trying to create the multi-channel experience in the game. Uh, um, for example, this one is about rethinking a club experience and a techno club experience created uh, a space that or a sonic space that never that always transforms and in any in every second it's different it's never happens the same sound so it's always something new or this one that rethinks about data flow and how can we actually visualize it? How can we actually sonify it? So yeah, like I would say that the other main point was to create like a collage of things. So as in a real internet or digital space, you always like find really weird combination of stuff. Like you can have a video with cats, you can have a porn, you can have, I don't know, some Wikipedia stuff. So it's always a mix of really different things. And it's always a hybrid. And in a sense, the game, when you play it, you can like sometimes go to the same room a couple of times because once you like go through the portals, uh, it creates a randomization and every like you never know what would be the next and sometimes you can go to the same room like four times or five times and you have this frustration and I think it's also like the feeling or anxiety it's also the feeling that you get when you're I don't know, like scamming, scanning through the websites um, and all the stuff, like when you're trying to find something, but you can't. And I think, yeah, it's really like the flow that you get or the feeling that you get from being in this uh, digital space. 
yeah i think it's like if i put it in a kind of nutshell that's all that i would say but yeah if you have any other questions i would be more than happy to answer yeah thank you Oh, thank you, Olga. As for me, it is definitely a good example of 3D space created for exhibition. All these uh, sonic studies, I think it could be shown both ways and in unity, super, it, it looks great. Thank you. Thank you for presentation. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions about um, about the the last presentation or about the previous ones? Uh, thank you very much for the answer, Laura. Thank you for the question. Maybe I could uh, add a couple, couple of words uh, about our previous project, uh, which we made together with Olga Vat, because uh, we had this question about hybrid hybridity. Maybe I could, uh, and we, we talked a lot about this interactive interface, uh, which we created. Maybe I could. Uh, say a couple of words about that um, so um so basically this interface was um uh it was based on facial recognition and here you can see a picture how it looked like uh, when you connected to the website you um you could choose uh, two modes how you can explore the website and the projects and uh, for the interactive mode you, you you had to give access to the camera of your device and then uh, we used this facial recognition and motion recognition and uh, we had this algorithm and database which um, recognized your emotions and uh, it was uh, constantly comparing your emotions, how you experienced uh, the projects. Uh, it compared your emotions to the database of uh, all people who uh, previously um, were at the website. And then uh, your experience was like unique. Uh, so you, you could only like uh, uh, push on like a, go to the next project and to the next and to the next. And then uh, the, the whole experience was like uh, every time it was different uh, because of how you uh, communicate with this interactive interface. Uh, but also many people told me that they actually, when they uh, saw this interactive interface, they started to play with their emotions. So they basically used their faces as an interface uh and to me it was also really cool uh because it was like not how we intended <laughs> to work but it was really interesting outcome at least to me so and uh, that's it maybe we have uh questions from the audience no no questions a big question for me, I'm not sure if we will be able to ask it, <laughs> is um, what kind of doc documentation or archiving could exist uh, with these web pages, with these online exhibitions? How long it should uh, exist? Can we somehow find this way of archiving these online exhibitions? Or they should just disappear like ephemeral things? It's an interesting question. Yes, it's a very big one question. I'm thinking a lot <laughs> about. Uh, I would say that we had to kind of create some archive to have access to this. At least, I mean, I, I was thinking about this website we created and it, it was like really, really big work to, to, to make it happen and but we were not able to maintain the website together with Volga. Uh, it was too expensive at the end of the day and yeah that's a problem maybe we could um i don't know save all data at least i don't know something like that yeah somewhere so that's again a question of database so mm -hmm. it's yeah. potentially eternal but then someone has to pay for it 
That's true. Exactly. But maybe the, uh, uh, the next uh, step, the next uh, strategy could be to store digital information in a physical medium. <laughs> Uh, so, for, for, for example, uh, like all we know, the Joe, Joe Davis' uh, works uh, for um, manipulated the DNA in order to store the, the information in it. So maybe, I mean, uh, that's one of the things. <laughs> maybe we, uh, at some point uh, we should store uh, our... Uh, hybrid and uh, digital projects in some physical formats, and they and our at DNA. least uh, maybe <laughs> our DNA. Yes, yes. Why not? Maybe I don't know. I would love the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Then we would need very complex devices to to read it. So that's that's another you know another issue. Yeah, but course. yeah, looks like we are creating the library of libraries. Uh, so there will be an archive, and someone needs to, you know, to invent the system of this archive. Crazy. Here we have a question. Helena, if I understood correctly, this can be used in a form of collecting visitors' impressions from the event. Uh, yes, actually, we had this database. Uh, we uh, but we collected all data like uh, in this um, uh, anonymously. So we had this database we, with this data from our visitors, but they were anonymous. So it was like, yeah, but we, we didn't want to store some private data on our website. Thank you for the question. Actually, it was important to us not to store the data. And uh, yeah, it's a good question. Um, OK, so one more message, like a smart instant form of survey. Thank you very much for questions and uh, impressions and comments in chat. If I'm not mistaken, there is nothing on swap card now. Did you check it? Um, no, I have no notifications. No, me, me neither. I would like to say thank you to all our speakers today. It is super important for us to, to share the experience and hear your presentations. Uh, it, it's, um, I would say for me, it's kind of networking feeling. Uh, to see that uh, we have a community. Uh, we have a community and it makes me feel stronger. <laughs> yeah, on my path. yeah, maybe like <laughs> if we all unite, we can maybe create a super garden. Yes, <laughs> sounds great. Hyper garden. Uh, hybrid garden, sure. Hyper hybrid garden. Hydra, hyper hyper garden. <laughs> Maybe Cyber. it will be the next Ars Electronica garden or our independent garden. We'll see how it goes like. I hope the next yeah. next year we will come to Linz. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Finally. yeah. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> to create our hyper hybrid garden. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you very uh, let's much. Let's do that. <laughs> Yeah, thank thank all of you to to join for joining. Thank you so for much joining. for inviting us. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for this feeling of community and the hope for hyper garden. <laughs> Always a pleasure. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Yes, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.